Hi there! So this is my homemade banjo ukulele and in this video I'd like to tell you how I made it. But first a short sound sample, this is a part of 12th Street track. Okay, that's it. So, I used the drum as a body, a body fretboard, tuning pegs for ukulele, and oak neck, which goes through the body. I'm using an old sock for muting it a little, and this piece of wood helps me with tone sustain. Now, using some pictures, I will describe how I made it. Interesting sources will be in annotations or in description, like these videos, which inspired me a lot. So it all started as a dream, but then I made this outline. Okay, it's just very simple, but here I found out I need just 9 parts, so it shouldn't be that hard to build it. Drum, wood for the neck and fretboard, frets, nut, tuning packs, bridge, tailpiece and strings obviously, but they are not in the picture. Plus of course some glue, screws and tools. I don't have any workshop nor any wood skills, so I was following the rule, keep it simple. Before I started buying these things, I had to specify the size and I found out the most important is the scale length, which is the distance from a nut to bridge. It influences the length of the neck, fretboard, body, distance between frets, well, everything. I wanted to build a tenor size ukulele with the same scale length as my classic ukulele, which is 17 inches, that's 432 millimeters, and 11 inches long fretboard, that's around 28 centimeters. Before I started, I made a cardboard model to find out if all sizes are okay. Large enough body to hold it comfortably and long enough neck. Everything was fine, so I finally started. I used 8 inch stack drum as a body, just cut the hole for the neck and made holes to fix it to the neck. I saw some videos using various things as a body, tin can, cardboard, cigar box or frying pan, that was nice one, but I think drum is the best for the banjo ukulele. Then I processed the neck, the neck should be out of some hardwood, I think maple is one of the best. I used oak. It's actually one half of a door threshold. I cut the body part, shaped the neck and head, and made holes for tuning packs. As you can see here, with the little holes for screws. For finishing the neck, I used three different kinds of sandpaper. With the last one, it was more like polishing the wood. And finally, some protective paint. You can see the difference in color it made. I put in the tuning packs and the neck was finished. Here's the detail on tuning packs and from the other side. Then I could attach the neck to the drum. Here's the detail on the part where the neck connects with the drum. Not very nice, but as I said, simple. I fixed the neck just with two screws and used some spare parts from the fretboard as a support for the tailpiece. I'm not very proud about this part, but well, it works. With the neck prepared, I could start with the fretboard, which is a very important part. I bought an ebony fretboard for mandolin and I had to cut it a little because it was too large. It's really hard wood, so it was, well, quite hard. I used the spare parts for a tailpiece and to make a bridge. And here we get to measuring. The distance between frets matters a lot, so it has to be as precise as possible. It's calculated according to the scale length. I used a calculator on web, links are in description. I made a template on paper, stuck it on the fretboard and made the fret lines as you can see in the picture. 
I was cutting thread slots with a small hand so so to make a straight cut I built this little tool. It was again just a simple one out of some spare wood but I think I couldn't do it without it. The thread slot has to be deep enough so the thread fits in perfectly. To measure the depth I just draw the required length on a piece of paper and I was measuring it with that. It was 2mm for the thread wire I used. With the slots prepared, the next step was to cut the thread wire and prepare individual threads. I cut the wire to required length, used the a file to adjust the length to fit perfectly to the fretboard and to round them a little. Then for finishing the fretboard, I applied a little glue to the slot, pushed the thread in and used the hammer to get it in all the way. Here you can see how it looked from the side, little gaps under the threads, so I put in some sawdust used a drop of super glue to fix it and polished it with sandpaper, as they did it in this video. And the most important part was ready. I don't actually need 18 threads for playing, but I wanted the neck to be that long and it would look, well, weird without threads. For making a nut, I bought the bone nut for guitar, cut it to required length, made some cuts for strings and polished it a little. Then, unfortunately, I forgot about making pictures, so I made these when it was finished. I just glued the fretboard to the neck with some special glue for wood, used clamps to fix it and let it dry for a day. Then I cleaned it a little and that was it. I put the nut in place after I put the strings on, so I'm skipping the tailpiece now. At first I just left it like that, but it was moving a little so I used some glue to fix it. And here's one more picture with the nut. So, to make a tailpiece, if I can call it like that, I just used two small parts of ebony wood, made holes for strings and used two screws to fix it to the body. Well, the screws are actually going through to the neck. As you can see here on the right side, I had to add a little piece of wood for this purpose. And on the left side, I had to add another part because I made the hole for the neck too deep. Finally, when I put the strings on, I also put the bridge in place before I tighten them. It's the bridge for banjo, I just cut it a little to adjust the height. I made one out of the fretboard spare parts as well, but I'm using this one. Here you just have to keep in mind the scale length and put the bridge on the right place. And that was all. My own banjo ukulele was finished. And last thing I want to show you is how much did it cost. These are prices of all parts I paid here in Czech Republic, converted to dollars, so obviously it can be different in your country. It costed $64 in material, I needed some glue, paint and other tools, I actually had to buy more tools, so for me it was $90 altogether. Well, I think it was worth it. I had a great fun building it and it sounds okay. That's all. If I made it, you can do it as well, so stop dreaming and make it happen. Just please watch your fingers so you can enjoy your playing as well. Thanks for watching and wish you best luck.